Okay, this is my CPD evidence and on my CPD I'm going to talk about all the monologues that I've done for my show reel, some of these you know, recorded all these of that I've done, uh, as well some of these some auditions and I have some videos here about before the audition and after the audition. Um I'm going to put as well a bit of I'm going to put the evidence of task one when Joe and Amy and I we record ourselves having the debate. Okay, first video that I'm going to talk about is for my first video audition and it was for a pantomime in London. Actually it wasn't in London, it was set in London, but it was a tour uh, pantomime and they were looking for some people and I applied for the comic character and honestly I was so nervous, nervous even if it was recorded everything I was so nervous because I didn't know if I needed to talk about myself and I needed, if I needed to introduce myself because usually when you go for, for an audition if they don't know your name, you need to call the neutral and talk t and tell them your name. And sometimes they ask you about where you're from. And, and what I've done for this audition is I said that I was from Spain. I know it's not important, but some people, when they're acting, they are putting some accents from different countries. And I want them to know that I can't change the accent is because I'm from Spain, even it's not that I'm pretending basically. And I was so nervous I recorded it three times and after that I was feeling that the last one that I've done it was the best one. So yeah. Hi, my name is Laura and I go to audition for the comic character of the pantomime. I'm 20 years old and I was born originally in Spain. I'm starting performing arts at the City College, Southampton, and I'm doing my year of agency. I'm going to do an audition that I did one year ago for Aladdin the pantomime. <clears throat> no, Aladdin! She's a girl, she's not worth it! Aladdin! She's a girl! No! <laughs> oh, great. Here we go. This is a brood girl and he's up. And what about me? We're best friends. We do everything together. I know Aladdin is always in trouble, but nothing as bad as going for a girl. Oh, well. <sighs> Thank you. My second video is for a pantomime set in Southampton and it was for a stage door and it was for an adult pantomime, Aladdin. And to be honest, I didn't have time to learn the lines because they sent me the, the lines like two days before the audition, they, before they wanted me to learn the lines and give them the video and at that moment I was quite busy at City College doing some work. I know it's not such an excuse but I didn't know my lines properly and I know that for next time it's better to know them and I wasn't quite sure about the character because it's so different uh, an adult pantomime comparing with a kids pantomime the humor is completely different and the way to talk I didn't know how to move I didn't know what to do at all and you can tell at the video that I didn't know properly my lines and I don't know I think one of the main problems as well is I couldn't connect with the character because I didn't know what to do for next time, I think one of the best things that you can do is learn properly the lines until one point that 
as well you can play with the character. Maybe I couldn't play with my character because I didn't know the lines. I didn't get the role either. And, but I'm happy that I've done it because I was feeling more confident for this one even though I didn't know my lines. And rather than for the last one. For the last one they didn't give me any lines because they didn't have... Uh, sorry, for the first one that I put on this video. I didn't know any lines because they said to me that they didn't have any lines yet, so they asked me for doing any any monologue or anything. So the difference is for the first monologue, for the first video, I'm feeling confident because I've done too many times that character and I know how to play it. But with this one first, it's a character that I never played, a different kind of humor, and I didn't know the lines as well. So I think next time I need to crack on with the lines and learn it. Hi, my name is Laura Parra and I'm going to do audition for the role of Adanini from the adult pantomime Aladdin. My beloved Abenini, I'm here. Oh, there you are, my will be a stepdaughter. How I wish your face will melt into the useless battle of the pointless DNA that you are. Pardon? <clears throat> I said I would have been here sooner, but I just couldn't. Park the car. Ah, yes. I thought that's what you had said. <sighs> Your stupid father wants to see her. Oh, I'm too sad. I don't want my father to see me looking so... Less advances in mental, physical or social development that is useful for a girl your age? I was going to say sad. Same thing. Oh, for fuck's sake, the writer isn't going to move on until I ask, What's wrong, my dear? Oh, my dear girl. Oh. I just slightly threw up in my mouth. I just feel as though I may never find a man. Less advances in mental, physical or social development that is useful for a man his age. I was going to say, worthy enough. Same thing. If my father has his way, I shall never marry. No one is good enough for him. And anyone who is seems to be under the illusion that I am in some way less than bright. Biggest understatement since Brad Pitt got on a plane saying, Oh, I'm feeling slightly touchy. And my father keeps trying to compensate by giving me many, many, many gifts. <coughs> Bit. <coughs> what? Wait, I said wait. Oh, money, cars, jewellery and buckets of cocaine. Oh, how bollockingly unpleasant for you. Why don't you just end it all now? You can't get it. Blam, nugget, and off yourself. What a great idea! Really? Yes, you giving me some lessons on how to appear more intelligently and sophisticated around men is sure to help. How is that even slightly what I just said? And no, thanks. I'll soon slide off my nipples with a rusty spoon and squat as it up my boom hole. This monologue is a monologue from the play As You Like It from Shakespeare and I was playing the role of Rosalind and at this monologue that I recall I was going to use it for my show reel but I didn't use this one definitely because first, okay, the play is set in a forest 
and Rosalind is pretending she is a boy because she just ran away from her house and they don't want anyone to discover that and at the part of the monologue she's talking about the man she's, loved with, she's in love with but she is talking with him while she is dressing up as a boy and first I don't like the hat that hat that I was using I was thinking oh she's a boy so maybe I should put something in my hair but I think it looks much better now how I've done it even with my hair like this because it looks more natural with that hat first Rosaline and at that place she wouldn't use that hat it's too modern on to or too pause and second it's too bright uh, I couldn't see because I was recording by myself and I didn't have any more help that day I couldn't see how how was it how was it for the camera and the lights were were basically up my face and I look too pale and you cannot see my face expressions and as well I'm so big for the camera I look too big I'm moving too much my arms too much my hands too much my legs and I think it's much better now have done it without moving rather than moving that yes one and in this manner he was to imagine me his love his mistress and I set him every day to woo me at which time would I be by Moonie's youth grief be effeminate changeable longing and liking proud fantastical apish shadow full of tears <laughs> full of smiles for every passion something and for no passion truly anything Okay, my next monologue, I've done it this way. My next monologue is, is Titus Andronica Stamora and is the beginning, is the opening of the show almost. And at this part she's begging to Titus Andronica not to kill her son. They are going to sacrifice him in front of her eyes. Um, what I've done is I try. I wanted to try to use a Grotowski technique to the improvement of the video. So what I've done, I record the first myself doing the monologue without any exercise, just giving the motion. And after I used one of the techniques of Grotowski, and I was running all around the room, and it looked much better. I changed the light as well, and it looks desperate. It looks painful as well and it, it looks truthful and I really like it and I am really grateful that I just learned something else and I Stay Roman brethren, gracious conqueror Victoria status where the tears I shed among the tears in passion for us and if thy souls were ever dear to thee, all think my souls to be as dear to me. Suffice it not that we are wrote to Rome to beautify thy triumphs and return, captive to the end to thy Roman yoke. But must my souls be a slaughter in the streets? For valiant doings in the country's cause, or is to fight for King and Kama, we will fight in thy. It is in this. Andronica sustain not that too with blood. We'll start draw near the nature of the gods. Draw near and then be merciful. Sweet mercy is nobility's true, but thrice no one tight to spare my first thoughts. Is a monologue, monologue from Luigi Pirandello and it's called the play is called Six Characters in Search of, in Search of an Author. And I'm doing the role of the stepdaughter. And at this part of the play, she's, she has a sister, a really small sister. And at the play, she's going to die, and she knows that. And she's like explaining to her 
that is really hard, but she needs to do it because she cannot change the future, and the future is going to be like that. She is meant to be that basically, and and okay, at this point when I I just watched the video, and it looks so big, so so big, and I don't know, I was really. I was really glad, crying for the time that I was doing it, and what happened in real life? In real life, when I cry, I do a lot of this thing. I do it all the time, and I always check if my if my um, if my fingers are black because of my mascara or. And because I was really into the character, not into the character, I was really crying. I stopped thinking about my movements and I was doing things like, and it doesn't look nice. It looks like I'm just checking all the time if I'm crying or not. And it looks too big as well. And for the second time what I've done, I just bring it down and it looks much better how I've done it for the second time than now. And as well, it looks so, so bright with the lights, she light as well, and I think it looks much better the second time that I've done it. My little doll, you're frightening it, aren't you? You don't know where we are, do you? What is the state? It is a place, baby, you know? A place where people play a bit serious. A place where they had comedies. We have got to have the comedy now. That's serious. <laughs> You have got to play. What a great spot to have fun for you. A garden, a fountain. Look, just suppose, kitty. It is here. Where you sat? Well, right here on the middle. It is all pretense, you know. That's the trouble, my pet. It is all make believe here. It's better to imagine it though, because if they fix it up for you, it will only be painted cover, painted cover for the rock, for the plants, for the water. <laughs> but I think a baby like this one will sooner have make-believe fountain than a real one, so she could play with it. What a joke would be for the others. But for you, alas, no. Not quite such a joke. You who are real. And really play at the real fountain that is big, green and beautiful. With so ever many bamboos around it. Are reflected on the water. And with a lot of duck swimming around. No Rosetta, no. No. Your mother doesn't bother about you on account of that grief. This is one of the uh, techniques of Grotowski uh, because I want to do. Uh, the monologue of Titus Andronicus, and I want it to be truthful and painful as well at the same time. So I'm going to run from one world to the other one until I feel really, really sorted. Ex 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 exalted.
Ex exhausted. Exhausted, yes. And when I feel really sad, I will be recording myself in the monologue of life sometimes. Stay from my brethren, gracious conqueror, victorious Titus, rule the tears I shed, and mother tears in passion for the son. And if thy sons were ever dear to thee, or think my sons to be as dear to me, suffice it not that we are brought to Rome to beautify thy triumphs and return. Captive to the end to thy Roman yoke, but must my sons be slaughtered in the streets for violent doings in their country's cause? What if to fight for King and Commonwealth, for piety in thine? It is in this. Andronica, sustain not thy tomb with blood. Wilt thou draw near the nature of the gods? Draw near them that in be merciful. Sweet mercy, nobility is true, but. Thrice, Mama Titus, spare my firstborn son. Hello. Today is 9th of November and it's Wednesday, and I'm going to an audition, my first audition person to person, so face to face, and I'm quite nervous. I have the scripts, it's a TV, like for a short movie. I'm going to do the character of Katie and. I will record myself again when I finish to tell you how it was. Bye bye. Wish me luck. Okay, I just finished my audition. I was so nervous, I was shaking lots and but the first they made me do it twice. The first time was better than the second one because the first time I think I just wanted to get it done so I just done it and I wasn't I was nervous. But when I've done it the second time, because, I don't know, I wanted to improve it. But because I was so nervous, I was really worried about acting and about everything. So the second time was, I think, worse than the first one. Acting, it was better than the second one. But I just struggled a lot with the words and everything. They were really nice. They were really friendly. And... They said to me that they understand, they thought, they, they thought that I wasn't going to learn any line and they were surprised that I have learned the first page. And they said to me that they are not worried about the lines now because if they get, if they say to me yes, they know that for the actual film, I will learn the lines for the filming and everything, I will know my lines because now I have like a short of like one week. I couldn't, because I was working and everything, I couldn't learn my line, so good. I'm happy, I'm nervous. I'm just waiting for, see what will they say to me. Bye bye. Okay, next video is from Taz One, and is Yo, Amy and I uh, doing a debate about the questions and who answer who and who reply and everything and I don't know I really enjoy in, enjoy in doing the debate because it's I don't know you need to know how to talk and everything but once I just I just done it with the rest of the class and Ian explained to me uh, how to do it properly and a debate is shouldn't be as we did it we thought that we couldn't argue we were just talking really politely and and a debate it should be if you're not uh, if you don't agree with something that they're saying you can't stop them you can just say no I don't agree and the debate that we did we were just letting everyone talk without and you can see that the pauses and everything really politely and the last one that we've done uh, it was so different different it was everyone jumping each other and 
but it's the way that it should be. But it's a good way to learn how to do a debate. Task one of unit 19, questions for dancing professionals. So, I've heard back from Shred, Shred Productions. Uh, one of the questions uh, that we're supposed to debate is called, how can you become an actor and find paid employment? Uh, what he's basically said to me is, you need to first of all start off finding a drama school and get a bachelor's degree from there um, and at that point you do three years of training and get your bachelor's degree and at the end of that you should have a showreel and an agent which you can then um, promote yourself as a professional working actor um, and he also just says constantly keep reading books and plays and trying to like keep the muscle of acting going so that you're actually finding work. Um, so yeah, that's what he said to me. Yeah, see, mine's right. just like focused completely on school, like not anything out of education. She said there's two routes normally, drama school or a degree, then drama school. So um, I agree with like keep on reading up on books and plays and everything, but I'd say like the educational side of it is the main way to become an actor and be noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's also listened to quite a few <coughs> courses for different universities, drama schools. Awesome. Yes. Who is that? It's uh, Tracy from the Nuffield Theatre. Tracy Pruitt-Shank. So she's the connector of so... Okay, and I've got a reply from the Central School of Speech and Drama from London. Um, she said to me, her name is Sarah, and uh, she replied to me that the simplest is that uh, the simplest way by calling yourself an actor is going for auditions and getting acting jobs. However, I believe that acting is a craft and you should train to do it. So basically, I am with her. You need to believe that you're an actor first, but as well, you need some training because. So they're all they're basically all saying the yeah. same thing that you need. You need to go to a drama school in, in order to, or at least a university at their minimum, to either get the training or the bachelor's degree so that by that point you should have an idea of the level of professionalism that you're required to have within this industry. I'd say like, training is mandatory when it comes to acting. Yeah, because you don't know how to play each style if you don't have any training here, yeah, classical or... Exactly. Yeah. Okay, should we go for the next question? Okay. <coughs> uh, the next question uh, that was on uh, task one was, should I join a union? Uh, and the people who, have, uh, who I've been in contact with basically said, absolutely, you have to do it. Um, they basically say it's like the backbones of this industry. Uh, it will protect you against any sort of like trouble that you come across with companies or fellow actors. Um, they're just there to sort of back you up and protect you as a working actor. Um, they say it's quite expensive so that unless you're working professionally and you're actually making a living off this or you're making enough to sort of pay for your um, union or equity as what he's recommended, um, then that's something you should definitely do because I think he's basically saying whether you do join equity for example that's a really good way of um, backing you up and sort of protecting you as an actor so he says definitely. Mine's, she said um, that if you're a former you should go for equity because of rights and everything and she says apply for equity um, the backstage jobs are covered uh, by BECTU and the lighting designers and musicians union and everything. Um, but she says she's a bit unsure whether she, you should definitely go for it because um, it is expensive and it's quite a big decision, so it's all up to the individual um, opinion. Mindset yes, it's important to join a union as an actor, as an actor can be easily spoiled. Equity makes sure that actors are paid properly for the work that they do. And I think it's like you said, like, if you don't have a job, 
maybe you shouldn't join a union because it's really expensive. Like, yeah. I think you need to be working as an actor at the same time. If you're not working as an actor, it's not worth something. Mm. You have to. Like, I, I think. I th yeah. I think. If you're an independent actor who's not contracted within a company and you're just sort of going out auditioning, working on these plays, um, then I definitely think something as like equity is something that yeah. you could definitely sign up for because as you have just said, it helps to make sure that you're getting a fair wage and you're actually... You know, you pay you pay how well you're doing this. Exactly, yeah. So I think if you're working as an independent actor, that is definitely something you need to do. Yeah. Um, I think if you're already contracted in a company or as an actor or as a technician, then I don't think it's something that you need to be as afraid of. But um, I still think equity. No, but I think equity is one of the most important things that you need to be doing if you want to become an actor. Definitely, I agree. But I think if you're in like already working for a company, um, they make sure about the pay and everything. Yeah, but I, I would imagine it wouldn't be as big a deal if you didn't join, but. It's still something you need yeah. to consider, especially if you're working on your own. Yeah, um, I agree. So yeah. Uh, what kind? Uh, the next question was: uh, What kind of productions do you find theatre audiences really want to see? Um, and basically, what they've said to me is: um, it, it it comes down to a whole variety of works. So. You shouldn't really be asking what do the audiences want to see, but like what you want to see. Because at the end of the day, I think, that, and that's basically what he said, so my interpretation of that is that so long as you're making something that you like and you're putting your passion behind it and you're putting a, a creative thought process into it, um, and you get the money and the mindset to sort of publicise it and get it funded the right way, audiences will come and see it. And if you spend enough time and you get that training from a drama school, then the show should work. So instead of asking what does an audience want to see and struggling to sort of aspire to the audience, you should make something what you want and then try to captivate the audience with that, if that makes sense. See, mine's focused on like where theatre is geographically, so the actual theatre where it is performed and um, the economic, social, popular yeah, population demographics, like they're a massive impact. And um, of course, like research is done by the Arts Council. But I agree with that it is down to creative um, intuition about what theatre audience want to see. But also, like, I agree with theatre like, geographical side as well, because if that's the main focus in the community, then it's going to affect the community as well, so does that make any sense? Yeah. Yeah. Mine is so simple. <laughs> she basically said to me, I think the audience are very diverse, so they want different things. Exactly, and I think that's, you and I have pretty much got the same answer, so I think, in my opinion, if you are going to devise a play or a theatre of some, some kind, you need to think about what it is that you want to sort of um, uh, display to your audience. So instead of thinking about what they want to see, you think about what you what you passionately want to develop into a play, and then you sort of um, work as a company to sort of get that funded yeah. and published to the public. Yeah, I agree. I think it's much better to see a show when you can tell like the actor is basically enjoying what they're doing, like passion, yeah. basically, rather than go to a show that they just learn the lines and they're yeah, acting. Exactly. Because you can tell like that person is doing something that is his passion. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, so another one of the questions was, who can offer support to young actors? And my response has been from colleges to drama schools, uh, amateur theatre clubs, professional theatres, and often youth theatre groups as well. Um, yeah, so there's loads of ways um, 
that people can support you if you're starting out. Um, from what he said to me is if you're a student and you're trying to get yourself supported by someone, uh, a really good way is to just either be on an A-level or B-Tech course at your college, a bachelor's degree at a drama school or a university, or just to be a part of like an amateur theatre club or, um, or a youth theatre, as he said here. Um, and I think that's a really good way of sort of developing your professionalism and it's developing your skill set as a creative thinker. And yeah, I think that's pretty good. Yeah, I think I've got so much with you basically. Um, yeah, if it's to support you getting a job, it's an agent, you can help with the <coughs> um, But if you're starting out, the biggest support is training in schools and farm schools, tutors. Mm. I've got a completely different one. And I agree with her, but I think she didn't get the point. Basically, she replied to me, friends and family. I think it's important to have your support from your family and your friends when you are an actor. But I think the question is not who can support you like mentally. I think the question is who can support you like an actor, basically, like doing a job like an actor. So, I think yes, it's important to have your family, but I agree with you, like, you need to have, like, schools and everything. For example, Gil, Gil Hill School Gil, of yeah. Music and Drama. Yes, is it? Yes. They said to me, the same that they said to you, like, the school will support all the students if you were offered a place in the program. So basically, it's like, wherever you are studying or working, they're going to offer that you their support. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I think it is basically just saying it's a really good way of sort of just helping you and helping you yeah. to develop your ideas and helping you to develop that professionalism as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, so the last question that I had was, uh, what is the best way to get a Forming Arts project funded? Uh, and he's basically said Arts Council, web, uh, the Arts Council website uh, has, you know, it can provide pretty much anything for you. So if you approach the Arts Council, they will basically um, probably have, like, have an interview with you. They'll talk about how much money you want to have it funded, or for transport, or for props, etc. Um, and that's basically all he's put. He's basically said, that depending on how big your show is and how much you've got going on in it, um, he says always contact the Arts Council because they're always the ones who will actually listen and actually talk to you about what they can and can't offer you. Yeah, I said it, it honestly depends on what you want to do. Um, if you're talking about making a piece of theatre of your own, there are lots of places to look for funding. But most people go through a G4A or grants for the arts application. Uh, she's put the Arts Council and all these links down here. Theatre Trust, Actors and Performance Advice, creativeengland.co.uk. Um, I think, yeah, going through a grants application would really help. Yeah, definitely. Especially if you want to become an independent theatre company. Mm -hmm. Mine just says Arts Council. Private, no, private, private, private. Private. Oh. Sponsorship, I don't know what is that. Sponsorship, sponsorship. And crowdfunding. Yeah. But I think all of, all of them agree about Arts Council. Mm. Yeah. So it, it definitely sounds like the, out, the Arts Council is definitely the best way to go because it sounds like they already fund quite a lot of independent theatre companies or amateur theatre companies. So that is definitely the first thing that um, you should be looking into if you want to get any work funded. Um, or same for many private companies, like private sponsorship would maybe get you just as much, if not a little bit more. So um, that's something. And I think it's like Danny said, depending on what you're looking for as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Did any of you got answer from mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Uh, 
How do I get employed? Yeah, which work is right for me. Um, she can answer this question, she says, because I don't know your, your abilities. And I honestly get that. But if I were to meet this person in person, um, perhaps, like, if she was a casting director, perhaps it would be her job to immediately figure out what my abilities were, therefore what job is right for me. So, it, to know that it's down to you as an actor and also the casting director, the director, to figure you out, because that is their job. Yeah. Um, you have to really know yourself, your abilities to get the right work as an actor, I think. Yeah, my said is like, I don't know you, so I can't answer this one. But I got as well the reply from Hill School of Drama and Music. And they said to me basically, like, they have three years of training and they will look at different aspects of acting, like movement, voice, TV projects, and many more. So basically, when you finish the course, you can decide what do you like, and the teacher can tell you as well. Like you said, yeah. I think you are good doing this. I will recommend you to have a look on going through this way rather than through that one. Yeah. Yeah. It is all down to my personal. And I think it's personal. Yeah. yeah. It's a very personal yeah. aspect. Mm, I agree. Like, uh, I have a back from a company called Forest Forge. Um, and with that question about how can I become an actor and find paid employment. Uh, they said the first thing that you've got to do is get into a drum school in university and do the three years training yeah. at a bachelor's degree. Um, they said to me also like go for auditions, get an agent, agent, network and see a lot of plays as well. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty much all they they've said. Um, they've basically said you just go to a uni or a drum school, get your degree, um, by the end of that, you should have an agent and a show reel so you can be working independently. Um, but they've also said that you should be either setting up your own theatre company or be working with a theatre company um, because they say that's more. Um, what was the word? It's it's more it's more valuable in terms of having a stable income. Um, so. Yeah, that's basically what they've said to me. They basically said if you want to be a professional actor and find paid employment, either go to drama school or university, get your show reel, uh, get an agent, and work on your own, or be contracted to work with a company or establish your own company and move on from there. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, I think that's everything. I think that's everything, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. That's it. We all good? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much.